This video will be a continuation of my R-Factor 2 dedicated server guide. Basically it's a way to host the server online in the cloud rather than on a PC running on your own network. It might be of interest to those who don't have a separate PC to run a server on or who maybe find it difficult to configure the port forwarding in their internet connection. The actual dedicated server installation shown here will be quick, so you should perhaps refer to the original dedicated server guide before proceeding with this example. And before continuing, I should point out that while I welcome any comments or questions below, I cannot offer support in any issues related to the use of the Azure system I'm about to show. I'll outline the relevant steps to get you started, but if you experience any issues while using Azure, then please contact Azure support. And if you try out this option and get it working, but find that it's not cost effective for you, then you can just cancel it. And when starting out, don't go installing all your car and track content only the content you will actually run in a multiplayer session, since even though you only have to pay for when the server is actually running, you will be charged for any permanent storage you wish to host there. So start out small to manage your monthly costs, and if you want to, you can also resize the virtual machine as well, to increase or decrease the amount of RAM and CPUs in use. Those familiar with Azure account creation can skip this section. Begin by going to portal.azure.com. Any links will be below in the video description. If you already have a Microsoft account, you can use that or select use another account to create one. In this example, I'll just register a new account using a temporary Google account that I use for testing. And once completed, you'll be signed into the Azure portal using the new account. You can use the Azure pricing calculator page, link below, to get an estimate on costs based on the options you choose. Select virtual machines and select view or just scroll down the page. Choose the region you plan to use in my case, North Europe. The instance here is just a baseline example, and as we said, you can resize the virtual machine even after you've already created it. It's just one virtual machine in this case, and we'll add a value of 30 hours for a month. We'll be using the pay as you go option. Note, however, when signing up using the free option, you might be offered the free account with credit option, and then later offered to upgrade to pay as you go. In one example, I got offered free with credit and another with pay as you go. Either way, I don't think it matters, since you'll only be paying for the storage and server uptime based on the rate applied to your account. The hybrid benefit refers to using your own licenses for Windows Server to save on costs which doesn't apply to Windows 10, so we'll select License Included. You can then see an estimated monthly cost, not including any disk storage you might be using, so start small so you can keep an eye on your monthly costs. We'll then select Free Account and Start Free, and select to use the new account we just created, and add the required info including payment information then select sign up. In this example, it stated that I wasn't eligible for free with credits, not sure why. I wanted to use pay as you go anyway, and will choose the no paid technical support option. In the Azure portal, if you happen to use several accounts, or if you've been granted access to another account, you can use the option on the upper right corner to specify the default directory or switch directories. We'll then click home from the upper left and then create a resource. 
and from the Azure Marketplace, search for Windows 10 and select Microsoft Windows 10. And then the Pro version 20H2, the latest build of Windows at this time, and click Create. We'll first check that we're adding the virtual machine to the correct subscription. Easy here since there's just one, but if you have several, you'll need to make sure the relevant subscription is selected. Then add the virtual machine name, and it should use that value to create a resource group name. Or you can select an existing resource group or create a custom name. And we'll then select North Europe again. The Azure support guys told me latency based on region isn't an issue, but I guess selecting the closest location to you is easiest to start with. We can select see all sizes to select the instance we want to use. And remember that you can always resize the virtual machine later once you've already created it. I had tested with a 2 CPU, 8 GB of RAM instance earlier, but I then tried a 4 CPU, 16 GB of RAM option, so we'll go with that. Note the cost on the right, although we're going to turn the virtual machine off when we're not using it, so it will be less than that. Then add the username and password we'll use when signing into the virtual machine. By default, the port for a remote desktop connection will be added, which we'll use, so we'll leave that in place. And lastly here was the option which caused the confusion for me in the beginning. I had to select this option before proceeding and which Azure support told me is a bug. Long story short, there's a bug in the Azure web interface where you cannot set up a virtual machine running Windows 10 unless you are part of an organization that has Windows licenses to cover it, which you won't be if you're running a single virtual machine for personal usage. And those licenses relate to Windows Server and not Windows 7 or Windows 10. And I eventually got the answer to my original question. Licenses to use a copy of Windows 10 for a virtual machine on Azure are included as part of an Azure paid subscription. So I then proceeded with this option selected. We'll then select a standard hard drive since it can be cheaper to use. The networking options we don't need to modify, so we just click next. You can enable auto shutdown already now if you want to. It's handy if you forget to shut down the virtual machine when you're not using it. We'll disable the notification option and select 11.30 p.m. my local time. We click next on both advanced and tags, since tags are for those cases where many virtual machines are in use. And then once validated, we can select create to deploy the virtual machine. Before signing into the virtual machine to install the dedicated server, we should add the ports required to make it visible. From the home screen, select the virtual machine and then on the left, select networking. We're going to add two inbound port rules. Copy the three comma separated UDP port values from the video description and paste them into the destination port field. Select UDP and add a priority of 100. Then give it a suitable name and click add. It's good to wait while the rule is fully added before adding the next entry. We'll then copy the two TCP port values from the video description and repeat the process selecting TCP and a priority of 101. Once deployed from the notification on the upper right, you can choose to pin a link to your dashboard. And note that once deployed, the virtual machine will automatically be started. So remember to stop it if you don't plan to access it right away. And note that storage disks are added separately. So if you ever need to delete a virtual machine, you must separately delete any disks 
associated with it. And now while the virtual machine is already running, we can click connect and then RDP and download the RDP file. And we must do this every time we start the virtual machine, as it will be assigned a dynamic IP address. And note, whenever stopping a virtual machine, you will be asked if you want to reserve an IP address for it. Doing so will cost you extra, so ignore that option and download a new RDP file whenever you need to connect to the virtual machine. The RDP file will be in our downloads folder, so we can run it from there. Click connect and add the username and password we assigned when creating the virtual machine. Before we first log on to the virtual machine, I noticed that in some cases, I think it's on Windows 10 Home Edition, you'll have to click more choices and then use a different account when trying to log in. So keep that in mind just in case. Then click OK and then Yes. And since this will be our first time to log on to the virtual machine, we can just select No to all the privacy options. And select Yes to the network prompt if it appears. We'll use the included Edge browser to download the server installation file. So start Edge and if you see the setup thing, just click through it and then close it. Then resize the RDP window and from the description below, copy the download installer link and then returning to the RDP, paste it into the Edge browser. Then open the file explorer and in the root of the C drive, create a folder called Racing. And from the browser, click the ellipsis for the downloaded item and select Show in Folder. Then right click on the downloaded item, select Cut and then paste it into the C Racing folder we just created. Then right click on it to extract it here and then delete the downloaded item. and we'll edit the folder name adding some capital letters, like we did in the original guide. Not really necessary, it just makes it easier to read. Then resize the RDP window again, and from the description below, copy the download command, and back in the RDP window, remove the folder path in the file browser, type CMD and press enter, and then paste in the download command we copied and press enter. And while that is running, we can return to the C Racing folder, right click and select New Text Document. Then open the document and again paste in the download command we copied. And on the new line enter the word pause. It's optional, it just allows you to check the results once a command has completed running. Then using the save as type all files option, we'll name this update.bat. Note the firewall prompt appearing from the command window running in the background. Make sure and click allow whenever these appear. And then we can right click on the update.bat file we created and choose send to desktop. Then resize the RDP window again, and from the video description below, copy the download content command. And a shout out to Adam Short, who left a comment on the original video, with a suggestion for the download command to enable a prompt to enter the workshop item ID, which we'll use here. And back in the RDP window, open the text document we created and paste in the download command. And again, using the save as type all files option, we'll name this download.bat.
we can then delete the text document. And like before, we'll place a shortcut to the download that bat file on the desktop. The command window states that the server has been fully installed, so we can now close that window. And any time we want to check for a dedicated server update, we just run the update shortcut from the desktop. We'll then resize the RDP window again and on the PC go to the R Factor 2 workshop on Steam and select the stock car 2018X. Note that just as examples we'll use content created by Studio 397 which all users should be automatically subscribed to. As a test we have unsubscribed from the content so it's now uninstalled allowing us to confirm that when joining the dedicated server, any content we don't already have is downloaded and installed. To view the item ID, from the Steam menu above, select Settings, and from Interface, enable the display web address bars when available, and click OK. Then copy the item ID that appears above, and returning to the RDP, Click on the download shortcut and paste in the item ID and press enter. And while the item is downloading, we'll resize the window again and return to Steam and choose the Indianapolis track and copy the ID for it. And returning to the RDP, we can see that the download has completed. So we can press any key to close the window and run the download command again to download the next item ID. And while that is downloading, from the file explorer, we'll go to C Racing Steam CMD Steam Apps Workshop Content, which is where the downloaded packages will be stored. And then using another file explorer window, if the RDP window is in full screen mode, you can use the Windows key plus E option to open another file explorer window. And go to C Racing R Factor 2 Dedicated and then Packages, which is where we'll copy the downloaded packages before installing them. Since the download is still in progress, we'll open the bin64 folder there and right click on the Mod Manager app and choose Send to Desktop. Then resizing the RDP again, from the video description, copy the server shortcut edit text and then back in the RDP, right click on the R Factor 2 dedicated app in the bin64 folder and again choose send to desktop. Then right click on that shortcut and choose properties. Then place your cursor at the end of the target value and paste in the server shortcut edit text we just copied. Then click apply and OK. Then moving back into the root of the R Factor 2 dedicated directory, go to support and then tools, and then place a desktop shortcut for the Mass 2 X64 app. Now that the other download has completed, we can press any key to close the command window, and from the content folder on the right, copy over the RFCMP package files to the packages folder on the left, then we can delete the folders on the right. Then using the shortcut, start the mod manager app and begin by making sure the directories on the lower right point to the root of the dedicated server and the packages folder there. Enable components above and filtering the installed column by yes and no, install the new packages. We can then close the Mod Manager app. We'll then start the Mass2 tool to create the server package. We first check that it's pointing to the packages directory inside our dedicated server installation, which is C 
racing, or factor 2 dedicated, and then packages. Then we create a new mod package. We'll call it 2018X Indy. And using next, select the track and car to include in the package. Then in the last screen, deselect all layouts except the oval. Then click package and then install. We can then start the dedicated server app. And then add a race name, the name that will appear in the multiplayer list. We'll use the same name we used for the mod. And then add a password and some AI cars if we wish to and click load track. We'll then return to our local PC and start R Factor 2 to access multiplayer. Then search for our server by name, click join and enter the password. The car and track is then first downloaded like we hoped it would be. and we can then join the multiplayer session. Just as a test and to confirm that all is working correctly, we'll copy the ID for another car and return to the RDP and exit the server to shut it down. Then use the download shortcut to download this new item and while that car is downloading, look for a track to go with it. Copy the ID and repeat the process. And as we did before, prepare to copy over the downloaded package files. and then delete any content we don't need. Then install the new packages using the Mod Manager app. And use the Mass2 app to create the server package. And then start the server. And here we can see the server and upon joining it, the content is also downloaded. If you want to copy some files from your local PC to the virtual machine, you can do so quite easily. After you have started the virtual machine, click connect, then RDP and download the RDP file. Then find the RDP file in your downloads folder, right click on it and choose edit. Then from the local resources tab in the middle, click more below and click the plus to expand the drives list and select the drive you would like to access via the virtual machine and click OK. Then once you have logged on to the virtual machine, you'll see the local drive and you can transfer files to or from it. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you know anybody who is interested in R Factor 2, and in this case maybe trying to set up a dedicated server, then please share the link with them. Until next time, thank you.